morning, folks. Brian here, Joe Mike, and it's Earth Watch Tuesday, September 30, 2025. Let's talk a little bit about uh, forecasting earthquakes. So forecasting seismic responses is based on a number of variables and conditions and uh, repeated patterns. So uh, I'm going to go through all the different conditions. On, uh, what can result in uh, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So first, as our jet streams continue to uh, destabilize and break down, they are no longer following in predicted and expected patterns and directions of flows. And more and more low pressure systems are developing. We'll come back to that. Along with the deterioration and weakening of the protective magnetic field, which allows increased levels of cosmic radiation uh, reaching and penetrating through the crust as well. Now, there is also the role of cosmic radiation in charging the ionosphere. And this process is uh, uh, influenced by both solar radiation, so the extreme ultraviolet radiation, the X-ray photons and cosmic rays. The interaction between... Uh, Cosmic radiation in the ionosphere can lead to uh, thunderstorms, weather systems, low pressure systems, atmospheric conductivity, which affects our global weather patterns. Now the penetrating muon. So a muon is a secondary uh, charged particle from the primary cosmic ray. So a cosmic ray enters the Earth's atmosphere, interacts with the atmospheric atoms, and a secondary showering process takes place. The secondary showering particles are called the muons. And it has been shown that they do penetrate the Earth's crust. And when they uh, interact with silica-rich magma, Highly viscous, silica-rich magma, a process called bubble nucleation takes place. Essentially, it's heated up and it's pressurized. Now, getting into the uh, pressure systems. So high pressure system is the good weather. It's like an open umbrella, a high pressure system, which helps to prevent some of the muons, the showering muons, in not reaching Earth below, they might be deflected away. High pressure systems. But low pressure system, that's like when the umbrella closes in on itself. It's a low pressure system. So now that area below is no longer protected from the showering muons coming down. Uh, the large 1991 Philippines Pinatubo volcanic eruption happened right in the middle of the uh, super typhoon crossing over. Typhoon Yuan, or, or I can't remember the pronunciation of the name. So when you put all this together and reoccurring patterns, I can then suggest where an earthquake will happen within a time frame, say between hours and about a week. It takes more study and observation to narrow down a time frame. And again, it all depends on the uh, the contents of the magma, how viscous it is, the silica content of the magma. But as it has been demonstrated countless times now, whenever we have low pressure systems, hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones passing over, Low pressure over certain areas, you can foresee or suggest a seismic response. The same is true for the sun side facing of the planet during geomagnetic instabilities, geomagnetic storms. And again, as has been demonstrated so many times, I just finished doing a video showing you the uh, Earth's sun-facing side during the G3-strong geomagnetic storm impact, the bow shock, okay, the bow shock, the solar winds. 
and now they can be just the plain old normal solar winds, the bow shock. If this is the sun side, right, the bow shock. And I showed you that the bow shock side or the sun side was starting off in Papua New Guinea, working us through through the Java Sea, crossing over the Sunda Strait and terminating in the Indian Ocean. I suggested an earthquake in those areas. And we just had three uh, earthquakes in the Java Sea, 6.3 and a couple of sixes. If this can be demonstrated repeatedly, it's not a coincidence. You do this long enough and you also see patterns. One area, for example, is the Puerto Rico Trench. Whenever you have hurricanes pass over, low pressure systems, you have an increase in earthquakes in that area and surrounding area, all the way down to the Caribbean arc of volcanic islands. So it's repeated pattern locations. And that would suggest that these are areas where there's more viscous silica rich magma. So it's not just volcanic chambers and reservoirs. I suspect it's the mantle plumes. So once again, the mantle plume, which is anchored to the outer core of the planet, which receives all the cosmic rays, the magma, the hotter magma, this would be considered the transition zone between 410 and 660 kilometers deep, comes to the underside of the lithosphere in which the crust and the ocean sit upon, creates a uh, mantle plume head, which could be thousands of kilometers in diameter, and I suspect they're growing. We have match, uh, branches, arms, nodes, pushing up underneath the crust. The gaps in between my fingers are fracture zones. My knuckles are volcanoes. So can we use this observations and events to foresee which areas in the planet would be harder hit as we get closer to the 3600 year timeline of the crossing? Some other observations I want to show you. One moment. So this is one of many pole shift maps. I'm only going to concentrate on the eastern seaboard. And this is also part of Edgar Cayce's readings that during the pole shift, Atlantis will rise and appear here. He actually set off a Bimahini in this area here. But in this pole ship map, it's showing the uh, rise of Atlantis. And right here, that's where Bermuda is. Now I want to get into something else. I'm not doing a global uh, flood map. This one just has my interest and I'll get into it. In April 2024, I did a series of videos of uh, some anomalies starting from uh, New York, Carolinas, Bahamas, San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, coastline, etc. So I do have video proof of satellite recorded heat detections in the waters picked up by a camera of steam emissions. So I'm just going to replay this video. It's on my playlist, heat and volcanic eruptions or heat and volcanoes. Confirmed steam from the waters. Uh, so let's just play it first. Sunday, April 7th. So I have a confirmation on these uh, heat detections right here. I do have a camera. It's actually somebody's uh, Nest security camera. So again, we have some detections here. Uh, the camera is from... Uh, Green Turtle Key. I'll take you to uh, Windy. So this is our camera location right here first. This is it right here. So let's take a look. Uh, so Nest. So this is Nest security camera. So this is somebody's personal security camera here. So you can see here in the distance, and I'll show you precisely where this is. This more looks uh, looks more like a steam 
transmission. So it started about four hours ago. Okay, you see this? It's three hours ago. And here. You can see from the color of the emissions, the smoke, that this is not uh, vegetation burning. So let's go back to, uh, first of all, I'll, uh, I'll show you, confirm the camera location here. New Plymouth. Which is, this road here, turn left. It's right here, in this general area. This is our, our security camera, someone's house. There's the dock that goes out. Here's the little peninsula island. So it's in this direction here. In this direction here, follow me. Pointing out right towards the waters. In line of sight to our heat right here. So here's our camera location right here, the dock, peninsula, line of sight, right there. Let me quickly uh, note the timing. Uh, so their local time at 10.20 a.m. Hey, amazing. Keeps them happening at the same time. There you go, folks. There's confirmation that we do have heat signatures and the uh, an emission of some sort, probably steam, from this area here. Let's uh, see if we can get a better look on Google. Uh, let me... Right in here. Once again, heat detections in the waters. Go to windy.com. So windy.com, you can uh, use some live webcams. And in this uh, case, it is, uh, let's see uh, right at the top here, it says uh, nest. It's the same type of security cameras I have in my house. And we obviously have a steam emissions coming out of the waters. I do have other videos showing uh, an emission of some type coming over waters matched up with a satellite detected heat. Just wanted to show you that one. So I wonder if this might suggest maybe we have a growing mantle plume off the eastern seaboard of the United States that might push up Atlantis to surface. Heat is sometimes shown in the area. I just showed you a video. Right. It's a mantle plume. Is this Atlantis right now on the bottom of the ocean? Just a suggestion, folks. Uh, so I've been posting quite a bit. Oh, by the way, um, so I did a picture post on uh, my YouTube channel. And I loaded up the pictures, which did say the 6.3, excuse me, and other earthquakes. But when I posted it, YouTube like scale down the picture and it did show the title on the top that said earthquake earthquake just for the one person who commented uh so anyway i just want to give you a rundown how i see earthquakes happening
in advance. And it's been shown so many times. Now, other people out there in YouTube land will say, oh, that's not the way it works. It is the way it works, as I've shown it many times. When you have an impact into the planet, some people will say, well, that energy will wrap around, right? To the magneto tail. First of all, it's common sense. The side of the earth that faces the solar winds, right? Whether it's accelerated solar winds, normal solar wind speeds, CMEs, the sun's side, the side of the earth that is facing the sun, the side of the earth that is facing the CMEs, the solar winds, does matter. I ain't tooting my horn, but you know what? 90% of the time, I'm right. I got a pair of balls in my pants, and I'm mad enough to say when I'm wrong. I got no problem saying when I'm wrong. But it is predictive. The repeating patterns of the Caribbean. Uh, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, Philippines, Izuzu Trench. To start off with. Anyway, folks, just wanted to give you a quick talk, rundown. How I am able to foresee and suggest seismic responses. Now, it seems... That every time I do this, they happen sooner over the Indonesian Philippine region, as opposed to it takes time, more time over the Caribbean region. This suggests the compositions of what's in the mantle plumes below. Anyway, hope you learned something. That was all.